So I've actually never played a Monster Hunter game, but the absolute juggernaut of hype surrounding Monster Hunter World was enough to convince me to go and pick it out and give it a shot. So chances are if you're watching this video, you're in one of two camps. You're either a veteran of the series and you're devouring everything and anything you can find about the series, or you are, like me, a first-time player who's curious about this super-hyped game. Either way, what you're about to get is the first impressions of somebody who's never played a game in the franchise before. Hope that's what you're looking for, and if it is, grab a beer and uh, let's get to it. Welcome back to the second draft. Monster Hunter World is beautiful. Stunning, really. I've yet to take the plunge and pick up a 4K TV, but even so, the game is gorgeous and smooth running on my standard PlayStation 4. And next up, I immediately realized that the game is very Japanese. And what I mean by that is that Capcom is really not a fan of resyncing their characters to English voice actors, and the complete lack of language cohesion was a little bit jarring. It feels like ages since I left home to join the commission. It looks like it's easy. So, nervous? Honestly, I came close to switching to the Japanese voice acting with English subtitles. I might just do that going forward and treat the game with the same mindset I would say a foreign film. What? No way! So are we! Hey! Tell us your name! So I set about creating my character, and then I spent just as much, if not more time, creating my feline sidekick, known in this world as a palico. The Japanese culture is very firmly ingrained in this franchise, and I am not at all surprised that I'll be followed around by a cute little kitty this entire game. So the story is, lots and lots of hunters, biologists, and other adventurers have set off from what they call the Old World to track the migrations of an elder dragon, Zora Magdoros. Everyone wants to study it and its effects on the area it chooses to inhabit. Things don't go as planned, and your ship is ended up lifted up out of the sea by the unaware Magdoros, and is demolished. When you recover from the crash, your first task is to team up with your new partner and escape from Magdaros, then regroup with the main party of pilgrims. And when I say new partner, I don't mean the Palico. You're given another sidekick, a very cutesy human manager of sorts. And the game then sets you off and you're free to roam around the world of Monster Hunter. No, that's not true. You're, you're really, you're really not. So the human handler sidekick is... Let's be honest, she's grating, and she obnoxiously screamed at me to follow her as I tried to get acclimated to the game's controls and explore the initial area of this world. This way! This way! Hurry! Come here! Come here! This way! Come here! Come here! Come here! Hello? Anybody there? This world begs you to explore it, and yet it simultaneously sets the tone for wanting to tell you how and when to explore it. Monster Hunter also frequently took control of the game's camera, locking me into a specific view of the goings-on. Characters yell and demand I follow them, and I'm stuck watching a mini cutscene unfold before the camera unlocks and I'm allowed to move again. That is not good. What are you waiting for? Get over here! And the game goes on like this for some time. For a game that's been hyped as being gigantic in scope and scale with the freedom to play as I choose, the first two or three hours of the game felt incredibly claustrophobic. And it's not until after you take down your first reasonably sized monster that the training wheels start to come off and the game's true appeal becomes apparent. And at that point I actually did start to get it. Going back into the world on my own with just my palico in tow and taking down the same type of monster that I defeated at the end of the tutorial was very rewarding and it was downright fun. I was finally having the sort of experience I expected from Monster Hunter World in the first place, one that was far less scripted and on rails. Hunting down monsters, learning the best way to take them down, and then using their parts to create a bunch of new armor and weapons will probably end up being addicting. And if that sounds like a bit of a grind, well, it sort of is. But it's not much different than, say, repeatedly running through the same raids and strikes in Destiny 2, hoping to get new Ingrams. Here, it just takes the form of really dynamic and challenging boss fights instead of a mission. 
And that's where I think the true heart of Monster World Hunter lies. And I think it will drive me to keep playing, even if the story and the characters are a bit grating for my taste at this point. It's a game that's literally built around lots and lots of boss fights. And I love boss fights. Well, you were right. There's our mark. It's pretty awesome using strategy, skill, and time spent studying a creature to take it down and then craft a new weapon or a piece of armor that says, I beat that huge kaiju monster and I'm a f***ing badass. Initially, the controls are a little wonky and seem pretty overly complicated to a newcomer like me. I thought I was heading out into the world with a sword and shield, and it turned out I was carrying a blade and shield that combined into some sort of a gigantic axe, and I had no idea how to properly use this huge, big, bulky weapon. I felt like I was fighting against the game's controls until I switched to a more newbie-friendly and traditional sword and board. Then I felt way more comfortable and more evenly matched with the monsters I was fighting. And it's still going to take some time to get used to the confusing crafting system and the myriad consumables and gadgets I have at my disposal at any given time. But the rewarding aspects of the gameplay and the looting and progression of my character I think will keep me motivated to figure out all these things and hopefully at some point become good at the game. And I might get slammed in the comments for saying this, but I feel like Monster Hunter World is one of those rare games where a more MMO-centric style would actually benefit it. It's weird, given that this game is so loot-based to only have certain times where I can show off my stuff. I feel like a mix of both open world and instance areas would have made for a really spectacular experience where I could choose to strike out on my own or run around with players taking down monsters instead of having to stop and do so through the game's matchmaking system. Trading tips and stories with other players in camps and safe zones, much like I tend to do in Destiny 2, would have made for a great sense of community and camaraderie. Instead, I feel like I'm alone in this world, because I literally am, until I choose to call for help or enter into a mission that requires me to get matched up with other players. It's a game that feels old school, which is admirable in ways, but it's also a game that, this early into it, already feels like it's desperately wanting to be something broader in scope than what the developers initially intended. And those are the opening thoughts from uh, somebody who's never played a Monster Hunter game before. So if you're a veteran in the series and you're watching this video, do me a favor and uh, drop down in the comments below and uh, maybe uh, drop some hints or, or, or tips on how a newcomer like me can more quickly get acclimated and enjoy the game right off the bat. And if you're new like me, share some of your stories of uh, how you've been enjoying the game so far. Are you liking it? Are you put off by it? Are you going to stick with it? As for me, I'm going to go jump back into the game and uh, go and kill some more monsters and, and make some more armor. So uh, cheers. Thanks for stopping by and hope you guys stick around. Have a good one.